Thank you, brother. Can't see you. Well, well, that's a big subject. That's the Care and storage of your coin. Keeping your coins safe. What? These are two capital plastic holders. I happen to like plastic, capital plastic holders, although they've been uh, they went out of business, and they were bought by another company, and they sold them to another company. Okay, and uh, I don't know what they're doing now, but they're not uh, they're not making any of the large full page holders anymore. Uh, let's go. Okay, that didn't work. That didn't work. That didn't work. Do manually. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Most third-party grading companies, the uh, uh, big four, BCGS, NGC, NX, and ICG, they hermetically seal their coin holders. So they're pretty well protected. Although the earlier holders, the old green holders, the rattlers, some of those are not completely hermetically sealed. So those do have to, you do have to concern yourself about that. Now, raw coins, they're entirely different. They're susceptible to anything and everything. Uh, most which involve coins coming in contact with harmful chemicals, such as sulfur compounds contained in paper or cardboard, tannins in wood holders, and PVC and soft vinyl flips, and chemicals used in the manufacturing of canvas bags. Those all cause toning, some good toning, some bad toning. <laughs> Sulfur turns your coins black. It's, uh, it's, it's not pretty. And now there's plenty of albums out there. Lighthouse makes the uh, uh, the album for uh, third-party graded coins, plus you have transport boxes. They have singles, doubles, or even bigger. So they're readily available, and they protect your coins very well. Third-party graded coins, the holders do a good job of protecting the coins. But for long-term storage, you need to consider other factors neutralizing potential environmental damaging effects. Keep the humidity low. These items do a good job of reducing humidity when you, where you store your coins. Mm -hmm. These dehumidifiers, uh, the one on the left is a battery-powered dehumidifier, and you have a small silica gel, or larger <laughs> one-pound silica gel. I have two of those in my uh, data safe. And a hygrometer, which actually tells you what the humidity is. Fortunately, here in California, we have fairly low humidity. Uh, I have been using that large silica gel for several years. Well, I bought them in 2005, and they have yet to turn color. So uh, once they turn color, I think it's, it's either pink or blue. I think it's pink. Uh, you just put them in the oven and bake them. Till all the water comes out, and then they're Good again. ready to use again. And now, here's the intercept technology. This is really great. Uh, storage can give you the best protection against environmental damage. Uh, I mentioned the early old green holders and uh, you know rattlers and such like that. You should put them in these. Uh, boxes and sleeves, and they will protect your coin. The third party companies guarantee the grade, giving your coin will remain the same permanently, and intercept technology will help retain that guarantee. Now, all of these supplies I actually got out of the Amos Advantage catalog. So, if you subscribe to Coin World, uh, you get like a 10% discount automatically. 
if you want to buy any of this stuff. The raw coins are another problem. They are very susceptible to environmental damage. They need special handling and storage. Cotton gloves are a must. Coin tongs are helpful, but I've found that very large coins can easily slip out of the tongs. And then make sure any coin albums you get are of archival quality. That means they don't have any harmful chemicals in them. And fortunately, and some of the early, early books were not, so you get some, a lot of toning from that. Can I add something to that? Pardon? I want to add, like, cotton gloves are the classic choice, but if yes. you have, like, powder-free latex or nitrile, well, no, no, no. for any other reason, those are acceptable. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you, those will ruin the luster. Yeah. Well, It'll actually cool. ruin the luster. No. They're, okay. They're, they're, like, cotton, you're more, they're, they're slippery. You, people don't clean their cotton gloves. Those get dirty ground. Well, yeah, you have to. That's like, why they're disposable. You have fresh cotton gloves. Those will be in there now. Yeah, I have used vinyl gloves, and I don't. I, I really don't recommend them. But you shouldn't you touch can. the faces, regardless, right? That's a. That's, that's, that's more of like just physical contact with the yeah. faces than like any kind of light. Mm -hmm. Uh, and choice of selection of material, I should say. Mm -hmm. There are many uh, types of holders. You've got your regular uh, safe flips. Uh, Amos Advantage makes this large uh, slab type holder, which is pretty good, that the Morgan Dollar is in. And then you've got your cardboard flips with the uh, Mylar inserts. And those are all very good. You also have intercept bags for raw coins. You can see the large uh, Amos uh, holder in one of them. <coughs> and you have individual intercept holders, which are two by two um, hard plastic with the intercept insert. And you have coin capsules in any size, and paper, ins in paper inserts, which are archivally correct, um, that you can write on for your safe flips, put in the other side of the safe flips to identify anything. <coughs> Someone just rang my doorbell. <laughs> 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 I don't know who. I'm not going to worry. I've got to go. Uh, here's some tools for working with raw coins. The coin collecting bundle uh, does not come with coins, but it's very handy. It comes with a lighted magnifier and cotton gloves and a nice uh, soft mat to put your coins on. Otlight produces the very uh, bright uh, daylight type light which will show off your coins to the best advantage and of course the aluminum another illuminated magnifier which we got from uh, Mr. Luna mm -hmm. Dave what is that mat made out of? I don't know but it's soft that's all, that's all the description said. Yes. If you go to some place like Michael's or sometimes oh, yeah. the, the mineral shows, they have felt sheets that people display the jewelry and stuff on. Yeah. Those are really, really mm -hmm. nice. Those would work. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. In other places, any sporting good place that sells uh, materials for gun cleaning and taking care of, they have these special mats there and it's the same technique you use on the coins is you use to take care of your guns and weapons. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you uh, have it, uh, the uh, thrift stores, you will find hot lights. Oh, hot lights, okay. You only need a new bulb. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you got a $40 hot light for $4.95 and you know, go on Amazon and buy a $5 bulb for it, uh, mm -hmm. you can, yeah. 
Yeah, well, that's a good bargain. If it doesn't look beat up, but it still doesn't work, it's probably just the bowl. Yeah, could be. And something you just said a little while ago, you want to use a daylight bulb. Right. There are two or three different kinds of bulbs. There's a, uh, a warm light, a soft so white. You don't yes. want either of those because they'll give off odd toning when you're looking at your corner. Yeah. You It'll want a bulb it. that says daylight on it. That gives you the 5,000 Kelvin. The soft white is only like 3,000 K. Yeah. You make it a little reddish. Yeah. Make a penny look real good. <laughs> Other useful tools, uh, hands free visor, uh, ultraviolet light helps in showing defects. And of course a scale. Scale is very important. Uh, tolerances for coins at the mint uh, is coin weight is very strict. And if something is more than a couple of tenths of an ounce off, uh, or gram off, then there's something wrong with the coin. So that, that's very helpful there. Long term storage. Like I said, I like capital plastic holders. I have, I think, five of them for Kennedy halves, and they only go up to 2007, and they're not making any more. But all the rest, the pennies, the dimes, the nickels, I don't have one for quarters because the 19 oh, let's see, the 1932 to 19, what is it, 40, 41, that would be a very expensive, uh, that would contain a very expensive amount of coins, uh, probably close to $8,000 worth of coins. I don't want to put that many coin, that high of a value of coin in a single holder like that. But I've got pennies, complete penny sets, dollar sets, uh, half dollar sets, dimes, nickels. I've got a bunch of those. I like them. Uh, also, Whitman album makes good archivally safe albums. And two by two coin boxes. Those are for your little two by two flips. What do you think of the Dasco albums? So they're great. Okay. I had a Dansko, er, that earlier album was Dansko. Mm -hmm. And they're saying they're along the same lines as the Whitman. Okay. They are archivally safe. The only thing I don't like about those type of, item, of, of albums is that slide that goes across there. It can actually, uh, that can scratch and scratch the coins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Long term storage again. Uh, there are a lot of wooden boxes out there, and they're very nice. And I, a friend of mine uses these. And you can smell them, and I don't smell any, any type of uh, contaminants like, yeah. you know, varathane or uh, formaldehyde. Anything, you know, anything like that. I don't smell anything. So they, they should be, they didn't say they were archivally safe, but he hasn't had any problem with his, and he's had his coins in it for several years. And single coin holders, some of those are pretty nice. Some have uh, flexible, uh, instead of glass, the film is flexible and it can actually holds it tight when you close the lid. They're pretty neat. I don't, well, they're for slabs only. Do you think that plastic tubes that you can put in like 20 coins in a, on top of each other in a tube, is that safe to keep in storage? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's, uh, what is it, styrene? It's not reactive. It's Long actually not better easy. in some ways because the faces of the coins are protected by metal, essentially, right. the other coins. So it's actually like, in some ways, it increases things more. But you'll see like rolls where mm -hmm. the edges of the coins are black for where it touches the yeah. paper. But once you get past the rim, it's like, you know, in like isolated containment, you know, perfect. And yeah. you get a plastic tube and it's like that, but the edges don't turn black, right? Mm -hmm. 
this art box, this is story box. If you buy a lot of products from the Mint, and you have the, all the boxes that they come in, and um, I bought these archival Mint bo boxes online. Uh, <laughs> It's funny, they don't, they don't break down, so I had this great big box that was delivered, and there was a, it weighed next to nothing, because there was all a bunch of just empty boxes in there. But they, they're archivally safe, and a good place to store your mint products. They have individual coin set holders, uh, or multiple. Uh, that one on the right, is, those are all Morgan dollars, so the ad said. <laughs> and they're all raw, and they're all in their own little little cubby hole. It's supposed to be archivally safe. I hope they are. Now, I think I've talked most of, most about this in, in in an article in the past about safe deposit boxes. Or should I buy a safe for home? Well, I never had a safe, but now I do. I have purchased a gun safe. A friend of mine was moving, sold his guns, and didn't want to take the gun safe with him, so I bought it from him. My dad always insisted that you have a safe in your home. Criminal minds would think that you have items worth locking up, and therefore you become a target. Because your homeowner's insurance, if you have a claim, they're only going to cover $1,000 worth of, well, of any collectible. So if you've got a $2,500 coin, you're only going to get $1,000 for it. But you can purchase separate policies to cover the items. Mine is, my insurance agent is constantly asking me to cover the small amount of coins I have at the home. I am a coin collector and my coins are too valuable to store in a house. I'm also, I should have brought some of my photo albums. Uh, so I photograph any new coins I acquire, print them out, and store the photos in binders. The coins are then taken to the bank and tucked away in the safe deposit box. When I want to look at my coins, I get out the photo binder, binders and enjoy my coin collection. I also have uh, pictures on my phone. So if anyone wants to see any, I've got them with me, almost always. <coughs> But how safe is it? Banks provide no insurance on the contents of the boxes, and if there's a natural disaster, the contents are still not covered. My insurance agent will be more than happy to provide me with a, an insurance policy to cover the contents of my boxes, but it is expensive, and an appraisal needs to be performed along with a complete inventory list. Every time I add a coin or sell a coin, I have to provide my agent with the complete details of the transaction. Also, uh, the ANA will sell you an insurance policy for your coins, and I've heard it's quite reasonable. It is. Yeah, I just received a letter from Chase Bank. I received that, uh, I think, two weeks ago. I have one safety deposit box there. The say they will no longer issue safety deposit boxes to their depositors. And I don't have to do anything yet, but they will keep me informed. So Bank of America got rid of theirs, and I had to empty mine out. Fortunately, I found a, another bank that had two other boxes that I rent, quickly rented. So banks increasingly regard safe deposit boxes as more of a headache than they're worth. They view it as a legacy service that's not strategic to anything they do, and they've stopped putting any real focus or resources into it. It's estimated that about half the safe deposit boxes in the country are empty. How is that possible when you so, can't get one? <laughs> I would encourage you to visit your safe deposit box frequently. Keep tabs on your prized possession. If you only visit your box once every year or so, you could be surprised to find your box empty. There have been reports of banks renting out a safe deposit box that was already rented. And the person comes back and the box is empty. Regardless of where you store coins collection, at home or a bank safe deposit box, 
Make sure you use a dehumidifier with your collection and don't use any non-archival materials to house any of your coins. <coughs> I think that's the end. No. Other items of interest. The Deflex microphone, uh, micro microscope. Those are nice, they, but they're very high power. This, this one, I think, goes up to 600 power. And a coin, a grading coin book, making the grade, that's a very good one. Coin Oral Almanac has a lot of uh, trivial type facts. It's a very interesting book. And of course, the Mega Red, which has everything you want to know about coins, or American coins. Let's see, anything else? Nope, that's it. Very good. <laughs> All right, any questions for Dave? Yeah, any questions? Yeah. Back in the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s, and I was indirectly involved in this, the way you preserved coins, and you're talking preservation, yeah. was Hewitt anti-tissue. Oh, okay. And you could buy it. Uh -huh. And then the recommendation came in 1947 to the state of Iowa, the treasurer's office, because they have a hoard of 1,000 Iowa dollars, of which they still have on sale. If you want to buy one, you can still buy it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I got involved in some research with the state treasurer, and we went back with Helen and Don Carmody and some other people, and they agreed to open what had been put away with Governor Blue in 1947, 500 mm -hmm. of these Iowa half dollars. They were put in a plastic case, the type you buy to put little parts in, mm -hmm. each individually wrapped with Hewitt uh, tissue paper. They had been in the vault since 47 to 93 when we opened mm -hmm. They were pristine, mm. MS-65 and better, because we had the people there to grade them. Right. And the reason why they were so good, and I had to learn this, they had been sprayed with Egyptian lacquer, oh, yeah. which is yeah. The old way you preserve coins, yeah. mm. and so forth. And incidentally, if you want to buy one, the state treasurer still has them available at five hundred and ten dollars. The last time I mm. sure. yeah. they're the one classical camera that's still on sale. Huh. Hmm. Amazing. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Any? Yeah. 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 Um, gosh, when I started. When I started putting my coins in the safety deposit box, it was $80. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon it was $100. Mm -hmm. Then pretty soon it was $125. Yeah. And then pretty soon I had two safety deposit boxes. <laughs> and the problem wow. was the safety deposit boxes were increasing faster than the value of my coins were increasing. Yeah. Well, so the bank I just, you know, yeah. they, I just sold all my coins. Yeah, well, when Bank of America told me to empty out my box, they were charging me $320 a year. So, and I, and I went, after I emptied it out, I found U.S. Bank. They didn't have any 10 by 10 uh, boxes, but they had two 5 by 10 boxes. The mid-size ones. Yeah, the mid-size. So I went down there, immediately went down there, opened a checking account, and put all my coins there, and rented both those boxes. And since they were, since I'm a senior, uh, they're only $66 a year. <laughs> they're they're $166, one twenty, or 123 or whatever. And since I was a senior, half of that. So I got both of them for the price of one. Well, so it's pretty good. Yeah. But those are the last two of that size they had. Dave, I'm curious. You mentioned Chase Bank. Who's yeah. Saying that you couldn't have a safe deposit box. They're Is not it just your branch. That I don't think so. No, it, it came. It came from. You know, as far as far as I know, they came from headquarters. I still have mine. But they. Oh yeah. <laughs> They told me not to worry. If you have one, not to worry. And they'll keep you informed. They don't want across the board, they don't want to add boxes. Yeah. They, they, it's a, well, surprising it's a major cost 
to them, which I don't understand because you're just sitting there. Yeah. But it is a trend among those of us who collect other stuff, stamps and autographs, mm -hmm. that the big boxes, you know, and stuff like mm -hmm. that. They don't mind little tiny ones when you put your car insurance yeah. and your registration. Mm -hmm. But the big stuff, it's just a trend. Yeah. It's like what used to be a free checking account now mm -hmm. and all these other stuff that's going on. Well, Bank of America, the main branch in, in Concord, they no longer have any safe deposit boxes. Mm -hmm. They moved to a different building. Mm -hmm. And they, yeah. they have no safe deposit boxes there. Yeah. So they were very uh, brusque with me. I asked him, is there going to be a box in a new place? He said, no. <laughs> and then, well, can you call around other branches and see if they have any boxes available? He said, no, we don't do that. <laughs> that's how I got <laughs> treated at Bank of America. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> they still have the main branch. It just moved across the street. It's in the old... Uh, yeah, used right. books building. Yeah, Pleasant Hill Bank of America has boxes. Well, yeah, a lot of them do still have boxes. But this was the main branch, and they got, were getting rid of them. So, yes? Have you looked at any of those? Uh, there's some private companies that are specializing in doing this now. Some what? Private storage companies. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard of those, but I'm sure there are. For people that have stuff to store, you know? Yeah. Like this, so. yeah. I'm sure it's pretty expensive though. Probably, yes. But it might be worth mm -hmm. I would definitely get an insurance policy. Over 30 years ago, Dennis Hooker, who was well known in coins with Northern Cal, owned Ace, what do you call it, Palm Boker? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said every year after hunting season ended, the guys would bring in their hunting rifles. <laughs> And pawned them. Mm -hmm. They paid the fee. Then, when head sitting hunting season started up, mm -hmm. they come and get their guns. Get the guns back. That's right. all he was doing was writing a story yeah. service. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. Uh, Karen and I have two one-ton safes. Okay. And they're not going anywhere. No. Nope. We keep all of our clothes in there, and uh, we make sure that we have fresh. Um, uh, granular, granulated absorbent. Yeah. And uh, uh, it should be good. Because we like to go out and touch and feel. And, oh yeah. You know, anybody wants to feel our coins or touch our coins? We <laughs> give them cotton gloves. Mm -hmm. They want to, especially if they want to touch the gold coins. Right. <laughs> but uh, is there? Do you see a problem with, with that story? I don't have to see a problem other... Try not to let anybody know that you've got the safes. Anybody that comes in our garage... Well, it's, yeah, I know. My gun safe's in the garage, too. So. Is it bolted down? Pardon? Is it bolted down? No, it is not bolted down. <laughs> I've got a little story I'll tell you. My son... We live out in the country. Mm -hmm. And my son lives oh, maybe a half a mile away. He was running in a place. You drive up this dead end road. There's mm -hmm. some homes on this. It's out in the country. His driveway is up about a quarter mile up on the hill mm -hmm. <coughs> above everything, single lane. They have a closed gate down at the bottom. They were all at work. Mm -hmm. During the day, somebody pushed in. First in the gate, mm -hmm. went up to the, his place, backed up to the garage, busted in through the garage, mm -hmm. loaded the safe into the van, mm -hmm. and were out of there, and they were there for only about 15 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have video, the people that live on the main highway, mm -hmm. right where the intersection is of this dead end road they have to come back out of. Yeah. Showed the van going in and coming out. And mm. how fast they did that. Yeah. And took his whole safe, the whole mm. safe. So the sad so thing there good. is that somebody's <clears throat> not going to drive down Alhambra Valley Road, 
go up a dead end road and then go through a unless, gate and go like a, a mile up the top of the hill unless they, know unless they you already know. knew that safe yeah. was there. So the sad thing so, is somebody yeah. that he knows well, who did that. Yeah. But it could happen in just minutes. Yeah. 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 Okay. But they found the safe, tore up the bottom drill, back <laughs> drilled out, and of course, had to yeah, and you see a horrendous. Yeah, Don? I have family and acquaintances who lost homes over in Santa Rosa in the fires. Mm -hmm. And um, when you, if you do decide to buy a safe, think about where it's going to be in your house mm -hmm. and what the fire rating is. Yes. You see a lot of little safes saying, yeah, what well, kind of fire rating? What that means is <laughs> the contents will be safe at a very high temperature mm -hmm. for an hour. Some of the... If you're, in, if you're in a huge fire like they had in Santa Rosa where thousands of homes burned mm -hmm. down, those safes sat in hot ash for mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. And I know of people who, when they got in there, the safe was fine and the contents was cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to be careful with some, some fireproof safes release water when they get too hot. So if you got any paper products, paper currency, you have to be careful about that. Anybody else? Yes? I have some coins in the, this, in the safe deposit box, and then I have a couple small safes at home. And my feeling is, if I get robbed one place, it's like you don't put all your eggs in one basket. That, that is true. true. That's, That's true. true. Very true. Yeah. Like yeah. investing in stocks, you know. Yeah. 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 Very. Very true. As long as it's bolted down. <laughs> well, no, they're on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, just knowing you're going to talk about this, I brought a couple of things that people are interested. You was talking about lacquer. Lacquer still yeah. is a good way to preserve coins. Mm -hmm. Although they don't use lacquer, they have better, better polymers that you would use now at like British Museum and places like that where they actually mm -hmm. preserve antiquities. Still not popular for coins. I didn't have any lacquer coins. I had some coins I bought that were lacquered like a month ago and I rinsed them in acetone for a while, but the some of it's still there, so if you kind of want to see what it looks like, you can kind of see what it is. Those won't grade if you ever send them out mm -hmm. to a grading company. Yeah, they won't grade them. The, the grading companies won't. And then the other thing I'll comment on the grading is the companies do use good plastics. Oh, yeah. But they, now, they are not safe forever. So I brought a dime from the 90s that was graded in the 90s, okay. which now is almost 30 years old. Yes. Mm. And this coin has started to tone in mm. the holder. So it's so, not hermetically sealed. Right, and you see similar type of toning mm. in coins of this particular type of holder. So you yeah. can correlate what's happening mm. to the coin to what it's stored in. Yeah. So the they big, aren't perfect. The big They're four good, are pretty, and if you are pretty store good. If you store a hot place, it's still going to... Yeah have bad things, but I would say like, don't, don't treat these as forever homes. Mm -hmm. Probably if you're going to take best care of your stuff, you put it in fresh holders every 20 to 30 years. Yeah, or use the intercept holders. We do that in the museum, yeah. we we'll change our ash yeah. three oh, watches every 10 to 15 years. You, yeah. you see yeah. coins in holders that were stored in destructive, destructive mm -hmm. vinyl plastic that were put in those holders like in the 40s, and yeah. the coins are still good. Because they're stored in cool, dry yeah. places yeah. for mm -hmm. that whole time. Mm -hmm. But the same thing is still going to happen, it's just going to take way longer. Right. And I would say if you have some of those, don't feel confident that you got a good one. It's, yeah. it, it's still going to turn on you, and you still are going to have to return. Yeah. Yeah. So people that are really, and this is a sensitive subject to people like me who like to collect things in mint packaging. Mm -hmm. Because at some point you have to make the difficult decision of what's this mint packaging going to do to my coin and right. how much do I value it? And at what point mm -hmm. do I, you know, throw out the mint packaging to save the coin? Yeah. And at some point you should do that. Well, and some um, people are reluctant to. You know, and that's just my personal opinion. I went to visit my aunt in Chicago along with my mother and stepfather were there. My sister also came out. And my aunt asked me if there was anything down in the basement that I wanted to remember my uncle for. Well, I went down there and I found a camera, a Kodak Jiffy camera. Oh my God. And the thing, it, it's not a valid $20 camera is what it's worth. But the box that was in was original. 
The box were 25 bucks. <laughs> so, the, the original packaging can be worth something. Oh, and I had a question. So, I brought another one. So, that was my comment. Now I've got the question. So, occasionally, from maybe the more traditional dealers, I get coins in glassine envelopes. Oh, yeah. And that's really popular for stamps, but does anyone have a lot of knowledge on how they are for coins? Well, if they're safe lips, they, they should be okay. If they're mylar, if they're no, these are glassine. Okay, I don't know anything days. about those. Short term, not long term. Yeah, yeah. Short term. Not you had a question? Well, I was just going to say I had some old coins, and I put them in my at the bottom of my garbage can. Oh, okay. And I figure anybody who wants to go through my garbage can <laughs> have those coins. <laughs> Long-term storage. Long-term storage. There, there were two crazy people that I will call the Lawrence Brothers. And they were big-time coin dealers and stamp dealers in the 30s and 40s. So I don't know who, I don't know if it was Bowers as a young man, came to visit them. Mm -hmm. And this is a true story. They went into the, uh, the kitchen, opened the refrigerator. They kept the coins in the freezer in the little ice fridge. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people keep valuables in the freezer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here, here. Thank you. Here, here. Outstanding.